First thing first, I want to say RIP to Vivian Westwood. This happened a couple of days ago, a few days ago now on the 29th, obviously. Um, as you can see there via the date, via the Vivian Westwood official Instagram. And unfortunately, Vivian Westwood passed away just before the end of the year. And um, yeah, man, tragic news, to be honest. Real, real tragic news in one heart. But on the other side of things, considering, you know, she lived a very, very fulfilled, full, vibrant and influential life i don't think it's something to mourn too much in that respect but for me it's interesting because my sort of um journey or my sort of knowledge of vivian westwood kind of started unconventionally even though she's a you know uh a, she's a british establishment she's a legend here in the uk it wasn't something that i kind of i didn't know her directly from what she did in the uk I kind of came in it from a long way around so when i first started getting into streetwear um, I was and still am obsessed with the guys over in Japan, right? The guys like Hiroshi Fujiwara, Nigo, John Takashi, um, Tetsu, um, the guy that does Neighborhood. I forgot his name now, but all these people I was sort of obsessed with, that whole crew of people skating and the kind of, you know, that whole Harajuku scene, that streetwear scene from back in the day was something that I was obsessed with to the point where I was getting sent over like old magazines from back in the day and like scanning those pictures and putting them up on my blog and whatnot and writing, you know, enthusiastically about why I love these people, why I want to kind of emulate them in my own way. And if you're a fan of those guys, especially somebody like a Hiroshi Fujiwara, you will know that he's obsessed, literally obsessed with punk movement in like the let's say what the 70s to early 80s or that kind of you know region when it sort of started and also hip-hop I mean, probably Nigo's more hip-hop and obviously Hiroshi Fujiwara being very much influenced by punk aesthetic and everything around that and obviously something that kind of closely aligned to punk was definitely someone like a Vivian Westwood from the work that she did previously especially when you think of that shop sex and then it kind of progressed I think into the sedentaries or whatever that was called right so afterwards in terms of changing the name and then of course I um, iconically um, the work that she did with Michael McLaren her former partner who was managing um, Sex Pistols when they kind of first launched and that was how, sort of like how I got associated or how, sorry, how I got knowledgeable of Vivian Westwood as a brand overall and it's been interesting to see it grow over the years and kind of somehow by i don't think it's even like purposeful i don't feel like i just feel like the stuff just hits so well and it's got such visceral energy behind it it comes from a real punk diy anti-establishment you know angsty having an opinion stand for something point of view that somehow these kids nowadays the gen z tiktok types have been legitimately obsessed with like the pearls and the logo design belts and stuff and all these all accoutrements and i feel like a lot of it must come just from the fact that it's cloudy and it's something that could obviously get you a lot of likes on insta but i'm sure some of those um things that i've kind of described about the brand have somehow been able to seep through and hit people who probably don't really know much about the history and how it started in any way shape or form and i think that goes to show just how powerful and just how amazing of a designer and of a cultural sort of like touch point um vivian Westwood was for her entire life um i've also was always a big fan of her kind of unconventional approach to relationships i think the recent or latest one now is with this guy i think his name is like andreas or something i think he might be greek and if i'm not familiar, and if i'm not mistaken also i got familiar with him based on a couple of editorials that they must have done for like that magazine also well think about it now there's a magazine i'm not sure if it's still out and it's popping but i used to buy this mag and collect it for a bit called 10 and if i'm not mistaken it was founded by a lady who was also greek if i'm not mistaken so maybe that was where the connection with Vivian Westwood's partner was with her but it doesn't matter but there was a really cool editorial that he put together with Vivian Westwood and that Andreas dude who was a kind of you know the partner and the creative partner in the brand and I always liked the kind of dynamic and how they looked in terms of pictures and whatnot and how they spoke about each other I thought that was pretty cool and then of course I remember also seeing loads of really cool editorials of Vivian Westwood um runway stuff that looked amazing and I think it featured I forgot his name but there's this British model also is he British I think it might be American actually with a he's got like a really characteristic big nose rip dude and i think he used to date madonna back in the day he might have been in actually in her book um which i think was called sex as well and he was modeling vivian westwood and making it look amazing he had like you know shirling jackets on and big fur coats and whatnot he looked really really good and that's all the kind of memory i have and of course me and myself you know having bondage pants having pirate boots back in the day i remember that being a big thing back in camden when i was kind of coming up going to camden and seeing guys in the market reselling um pirate boots obviously the 
whatchamacallit, oh, what's the hat called again? I forgot what the hat is called, the name of it. I'm trying to think of it. The one that Pharrell wore, but I saw it prior to that um, on people like Nigo. You know, in old scans, he was kind of wearing that hat quite often. And you see people selling them also. There was a period in time where the shop, I think, World, I think it's called World's End. Yeah, it's a fitness shop now, but most of the shop. And there was a period of time where they couldn't fulfill demand for those hats when Pharrell ended up making them a hit because they were obviously a thing for a while, but he obviously picked it up and it kind of turned into a worldwide hit to the point where I remember when I was working at the 1948 store in Shoreditch, there was this really cringy dude. I'm going to say he's like a black French guy because no black French guys are like, they're like different. You know what I mean? They're not like, you know what I mean? They relax their hair and stuff and whatnot. They seem to put like, you know, Caucasian ladies on some really weird high pedestal. They've got some weird vibe about them. But, you know, I remember this black French dude that used to come into the store quite often. Cool dude, nonetheless. But I just remember him like being a stan, like a legit stan, like an adult stan. I think that's why I've always kind of had a bit of a disdain for it because I just couldn't understand how an adult could have no personality or personal or sense of style themselves to the point where they're just copying or cosplaying what someone else is wearing. I remember one week he'd come in wearing like what Kanye wore. So I think there was a period in time where Kanye had like, yeah, I think there was, a, maybe it was um My Beautiful Dutch Sister Fancy era where Kanye used to have the mohawk with the denim jacket. And I think he was wearing jewelry pieces, like Lego pieces from those two black twins that used to make jewelry. I'm not sure if you remember it. Back in the day, there was a period in time, these two guys from New York, twins that were involved in like street wear and like design and just being socialized and stuff. And they used to make these really cool little brooches out of Lego. And he, you know, Kanye was wearing that for a period. And that dude pulled up one time wearing that sort of kind of outfit, like the light denim jacket, the kind of faux mohawk thing, um, you know, whatever. And then the next time I saw him come into a store, he basically was wearing the same whatever outfit Pharrell was wearing when he had the Vivian Westwood, you know, huge hat on. I remember just looking and thinking, wow, what a wallad. But also, you know, the influence that somebody that would never really have known of Vivian Westwood beforehand would go out and buy the brand just because of one person who they kind of looked up to. And who knows, maybe that could then lead them into buying other stuff in the brand. But I remember having a couple of wallets from them. I remember having um again the boots back in the day i had a couple of t-shirts i've got a couple of mohair jumpers that are basically inspired by that kind of era right i got this sort of then and this one which is black and red and this other one that's like white and black which you know if you've seen me about back in the day you would have known that i was wearing those jumpers into the ground and those are kind of linked to you would say to that kind of punk aesthetic there was a recent actually recent collection from luebe where he put together a look with these like black leather bondage pants which are really cool and they kind of reminded me a lot of the Vivian Westwood um, parachute bondage type pants from back in the day. Um, the ones with the tartan were really cool. I think Supreme have done a couple of those. Every brand's done their own iteration of you know bondage parachute pants, you know, whatever, right? And I don't need to go through that whole history, but still, man, that like, impact has been strong in the fashion, in culture, in everything. And like I said, it's really tragic, but also it's not something to get super down about because I legitimately think this lady lived one hell of a fun life. It would have been nice. I don't know if it, this is the fact. I'm, I haven't really checked it or Googled it, um, especially to go after a couple of these sort of things. But I don't know if there's an official autobiography out of hers. That would have been really cool to have got done, like an official for autobiography um, in her own words because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of sort of like um, people doing stuff in their own way, journalistically asked, you know, kind of, getting together a picture of who she was as a person um from different people maybe close people maybe loosely associated but it would have been nice to have heard her own voice like autobiography i thought that would have been cool um in the time maybe it's happened already i'm not familiar with it maybe it's on the works but i think that would be really cool to kind of check out going forward um let's quickly read the caption here from the rest of the team he said, 29th of December 2022, Vivian Westwood died today peacefully and surrounded by her family in Clapham, South London. That's just the best way to go out, really, isn't it? And um, Vivian Westwood continued to do the thing she loved up until the last moment, designing, working um, on her art, writing her book. Okay, good to know here, the biography I mentioned, and changing the world for the better. She led an amazing life. Her innovation and impact over the last 60 years has been immense, and she'll continue into the future. Vivian considered herself a Taoist. She wrote the Tao spiritual system there was never more need for the Tao today Tao gives you the feeling that you belong to the cosmos and gives you purpose of life it gives you such a sense of identity and strength to know you're living the life that you can live and therefore ought to be living make full use of your character and full use of your life on earth the world needs people like Vivian to make the change for the better photographed by Jürgen Teller so also Jürgen Teller has got a nice little you know mention there I think he's he, to be fair he's aesthetic of 
picture taking and you know his sort of um style it suits you know Vivian Westwood a lot more than maybe other brands um that's that must have been quite a great privilege to see you know be able to take the final sort of pictures you know as she was here on this earth with us and there was this cool little article that i just saw now on online courtesy of a website called kids of dada that features some you know images from back in the day of the early sex shop on king's road right amazing right this was back in the day when retail was a thing creating like an immersive experience and kind of you know using the store as another avenue to kind of tell a different part of the story of your overall brand allowing customers to come into your world all those sort of cool things and making it an actual destination i remember back in the day when retail was actually at its peak you'd actually just go out just to look inside shops and to check out what was about because the shops were interesting in themselves not that you know obviously the products helped but the stores were what kind of got you in there in the first place um, but yeah, the sex shop there, you got a picture here from Westwood with some models wearing, I guess, some of the sedentary stuff as well on there. Looks amazing. Uh, be reasonable, demand of impossible. I love that. Some really cool stuff on there. I think that might be Michael Karen actually in the back. I'm not too sure if that is him. But yeah, some cool pictures of Vivian Westwood from back in the day doing the damn oh, that's back from Karen there actually. I'm like, doing the damn thing. And if I'm not mistaken, the iconic picture of, um, Carty on, I think it's self-titled. He's actually wearing a sedentary's um, T-shirt, I'm pretty sure. Loose, long sleeve. Um, sedention, so I, I didn't even say it properly. Sedentionaries. That's it, sedentionaries. I'm pretty sure she, he's wearing one as well in there. So definitely an icon in Ting. Uh, big up even Westwood. Gone but never forgotten. Your impact will last on and on and on and on.